Purdue is 6-0 after winning the Maui Invitational in Honolulu. So the Boilermakers now own victories over the teams ranked 6th, 9th, 11th at Ken Palm. That's Marquette, Gonzaga, mm-hmm. and Tennessee. They're number one at Ken Palm, number one at Bart Torvik, number one at Evan Mia. They only got five first-place votes, Purdue did, in last week's AP poll. That was before the Maui Invitational was played. They should get, I mean, they should get all 61 first-place votes when the AP poll updates this Monday. Um, at least based on resume, it's possible the three voters who voted Arizona number one last week and the and the one voter who voted yeah. UConn number one last week, they'll just stick with the Wildcats and Huskies, and that, that's fine. That but is- the 52 voters who had Kansas number one should now flip to Purdue. So Purdue should get, I think, you know, somewhere between 55 and 60 first place votes on Monday and be the clear number one team in the country in the AP poll. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Um, and yeah, no, that's, that should be the case. And a little note there with Purdue, um, it's going to be number one for the third straight season. And it wasn't until two seasons ago that Purdue had ever been number one in the country in the AP top 25. So the program went you know, more than a hundred years in, exis- in, it, in its existence. Um, AP poll began, uh, you know, 65 plus so years ago. Um, it finally got there and now three straight years. And then how about this credit to Chris Foreman, dedicated podcast listener, sports information director at Purdue. This was in his notes. When Purdue gets to this, when it gets to the number one ranking, I, this is stunning to me. It will be the first Big Ten team in history to get number one in the AP Top 25 in three consecutive seasons. It's never happened by a Big Ten. I don't know. That can't be right. That's wild. I, that, it just can't be right. I, I I saw I saw it in some game notes. So repeat it again. Let me make sure I've got this. <laughs> Purdue's going to earn the number one ranking. Right. Okay. It is going to m- make that number one ranking for the third consecutive season. Right. Yeah. It's going to be the. Th- it's going to be the only Big Ten team ever to get the number one ranking in three consecutive seasons. That can't. That can't be right. I, 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 I might have, you know, screwed up my notes here, but this is what I had. Yeah, I, I no, that can't. I'm, I'm going to go look at this. I'm going to go look at this again because I couldn't believe it. Now, granted, it's squeezing in a ton here on a Thanksgiving Thursday into Friday, right. but I'm almost positive that's what he put in there. Yeah. Listen, um, I'm not here to to question Chris. Um it's just that there's a blue blood program in the Big Ten called Indiana, and there's no scenario where you could be a blue blood program and not be ranked number one in the country three straight years. Yes. And Indiana's in the Big Ten, it. so I just don't buy it. I'm not exact, buying it. Okay, this is the exact note. Purdue is now this is this is genuinely shocking. Okay, Purdue is now positioned to be ranked number one in the country for the third straight season. Yes, prior. that's totally believable. I be, Purdue is awesome. Is is the most believable no, no, part no, of this? That. Prior to 21-22, Purdue had never been ranked number one. If it were to happen, Purdue will be the first team in Big Ten history to be voted number one in three straight seasons. That's the part I can't buy. Crazy. Well, I don't. I don't tell you. I'm I mean, it, you t- you help me here. All right, is Indiana a blue blood program or not? I. I actually think that's up for debate, but let's no, let's no, let's watch. Not no, it's vote. not. No, it's not. Indiana is a blue blood program. I, I, I don't think it is something that you can get and then are at no risk of ever losing. Okay. That's all I'll say. Indiana is a blue blood program that has settled into being the second, typically the second best in yes. the state of Indiana, but is currently third and in, in, is at risk of slipping to fourth. All right. I just don't see a scenario how our blue blood program could go, not go, could not never in the history of, of its blue blood in the history of its blue blood. I don't see how a program could not reach number one in a country three straight years. That's crazy. I'm not trying to doubt game notes, but like, I don't believe that. I just don't believe it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a Purdue game notes denier simply because I can't fathom the idea that a blue blood program like Indiana could really let its in-state rival do something like this that it's never done before in all its blue blood. On a separate note, we are on, we are living in the golden age of Maui title games. Since 27, here have been the final scores since 2017 in the title games. 2017, 
Notre Dame beats Wichita State 67-66. 2018, Gonzaga gives Duke its only loss in Maui history, 89-87. 2019, Kansas famously beats Dayton in overtime, 90-84, to just the second all-time overtime affair in Maui championship game history. 2020, it wasn't out yonder. It was uh, down in Asheville, North Carolina. Texas won in the final second. Uh, who hit that? Matt Coleman, maybe? Um, 69-67 over North Carolina. Two years ago wasn't an outstanding game. It was actually in Vegas, but Wisconsin did beat St. Mary's, and it was a two-possession game, 61-55. A season ago, Arizona over Creighton, 81-79, two-point game. And then here we get yet another tremendous one with Purdue going up against Marquette, winning 78-75. Cam Jones had a desperation, you know, 39 footer that didn't fall. Purdue gets its first Maui championship title. Oh, it fell. Right. It just didn't fall anywhere close to the rim. It didn't fall true. Okay. That's a little harsh, but I'm accurate. That's my little homie from Memphis. He knows he's now he knows he's in my heart. He had he had 17 points. He did well for himself. Tyler Kolick, I'll commend Kolick. He had 22 points, seven rebounds, six assists. And went three games in three days. Again, uh, just didn't have a bad ankle. I'm, I've never been more convinced. He never actually sprained his ankle. Tyler Kolick um, looked looked terrific, but Purdue gets the win. Edie averaged 25.3 points, 13.0 uh, boards, and 2.0 blocks over three games in three days. Braden Smith had 18 points, looked really good against Marquette. And then Lance Jones, I got another note from Chris Foreman, <laughs> made what is believed to be <laughs> The longest shot in school history. He, Foreman, live update. He's watching the pod. Either he's watching or someone told him and texted him. He goes, hey, I'm right. Trust me. <laughs> Sit down, Gary Parrish. He's right. I just can't. Don't doubt him. I told you I don't doubt. I, ne I never would doubt Chris. It's just hard to believe that there's a blue blood program in the Big Ten that has never done what Purdue has now done that just seems crazy to me don't, don't be a purdue notes denier okay it ends right here right now that was, that was it's just hard to believe that's, that's, that's i'm not saying i don't believe era, it i'm just saying life. it's hard to believe yeah exactly lance jones made what is believed it'd be like if you told me if you told me hey Why did I alabama is about to be number one in the ap poll in men's basketball for the third consecutive year and become the first sec program to ever do that i'd be like hold up what about kentucky it's a blue blood. Well, this should be a rule, I think. You can't be a blue blood if people in your own league are doing great things that you've never done. Can we make that a rule? I, I'm not going to go that far. Seems a little seems a little harsh. It seems a if, little vague. if if other I mean, schools I, in I, your I state done, are like, doing great things that you've never done, are you really a blue blood? Happy birthday, David Jones. Okay. Lance Jones sank an 80 footer at the buzzer before halftime. An outrageous shot. <laughs> the arc on that rainbow heave was ridiculous. Um, note with this uh, Maui tournament. So, after going 51 years without having anyone in the sport play the AP number one and number two team in back to back games, two teams did it by nature of how the bracket fell. So, Marquette and Tennessee were the first team since Loyola Chicago in 72 to do that. Uh, coincidentally enough, a little historical fact for you, Loyola Chicago is the only team to play number one and number two on consecutive days and win both of those games, but it wasn't the 72 team. It was the Loyola Chicago team that famously won the whole damn thing in 63 in the NCAA tournament. Um, big ups to Purdue. It, it obviously is, is, has the best resume in the sport going to be number one. Um, it's still going to get judged on what happens in March, but that doesn't mean it. Cause I was thinking about this. I knew we talk about it. Yeah, I get it. And I don't disagree. Purdue starts strong, gets wins over Gonzaga, Tennessee, Marquette. In addition to Xavier, you know, three of those teams would not surprise any of us. If we look up and they're all playing in the sweet 16 uh, later on this season, doesn't mean that we can't acknowledge that Purdue hasn't, done well so far and celebrate for what it is right now yeah i get it like it's it's gonna be judged on not falling on its face in the tournament uh, it's still got more really good non-conference still got to play alabama later this uh later this non-conference season and arizona so they still got two more and already it's it's set up for such for such a huge non-conference resume uh ranks top five in defense top two in offense right now the guards do look improved yes purdue is going to take some losses 
but you know, it, it wouldn't have, if it had gone a different way, it wouldn't have stunned anyone in a different way. I mean, like they go two and one in Mali or maybe one and two. And if they went one and two, then we would have to have a real discussion, but that's not where we're at. We're at six and oh, number one team in the country. Number one, it was number one in predictives across the board entering the season. Obviously continues that if not strengthens its hold overall. And there is something to be said for doing that against this level of competition. This was the best Maui field ever. Greatest really November, December MTE ever. As far as I was concerned, and statistically that was the case with five ranked teams and UCLA was ranked. Then weirdly got booted when it was refreshed the poll on Monday. So it was, it was six ranked teams heading into it. And then it was officially five when it started. Congrats to Purdue. I've got thoughts on Marquette, but give me what you got on the boilers. Well, first on Edie, he is statistically very similar, if not arguably better um, than he was last season. He's averaging 23 points, 11.5 rebounds, 2.8 blocks in 28.5 minutes per game. So his points are up 0.7 per game. Rebounds are down 1.4 per game. Blocks are up 0.7 per game. Minutes are down 3.2 per game. But that minute per uh, minutes per game number is a little manipulated um, because he only played 20 minutes against Samford and a 53-point win in the opener, and we've only played six games so far. So against high majors, Zeki is now averaging 31.8 minutes per game, and that's more in line with the 31.70 he averaged uh, last season. He's just an awesome college basketball player who is – picking up right uh, right where he left off. Um, and he's surrounded, and you mentioned Lance Jones. Like we got, you know, a lot of these guys Purdue is relying on are guys that we watched them win a Big Ten title with, Big Ten tournament title with last season. Um, Lance Jones is the transfer from Southern Illinois, and he's averaging nine and a half points, 2.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and 27.5 minutes per game so far uh, this season he's obviously good. He does make them smaller. Does that concern you at all? Like they, they go Braden Smith, uh, Lance Jones, Fletcher lawyer. I guess it's, it's a six, one, six foot, six, one, six, four, maybe in the backcourt that might hurt you in the NBA. I don't think that's going to bother you too much in college. I'm not that bothered by it. In fact, I do like the change of pace with that, especially if like, you know, Braden Smith is, is making good strides here. Um, Fletcher lawyer, you know, he actually showed up relatively well overall. And you're getting like Miles Colvin. He's going to get some good burn. Like he's not small, small. He's six five. The two like newer names that are contributing majorly, uh, relative to expectation, I guess, um, are Jones, and then Colvin, who's a freshman. Um, Lance Jones, obviously, senior, much older. But no, I, I I like the uh, I like the change of pace of that. There were a couple instances in the Marquette game where um, you can. It would seem uh, when I was watching, it seems like the the actions that they were running were specifically designed to get um, Braden Smith or lawyer or Lance Jones a look. Um, and then sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And then <laughs> Edie's just seven, four, what do you want? Um, and our, our guy just, you know, there were two instances I remember where Oso Igadario was straight up, you know, had his arms wrapped around Edie like he was a Black Friday special. I mean, there was just there was there was no faking it. It was uh, I'm just beat here. What are we? What he are tried we to purchase that Edie. <laughs> it was at, there at was, a discount. There was one where I think Shulman said on the call it might be a hook and hold, and then Billis was like, "It's a hold," because <laughs> he did. He just he just he just he wrapped him up, my man. Um, so I don't I don't think the. Uh, the size discrepancy is a negative for Purdue. I, I get where you're going, but as long as you're going to have Edie out there, and if you pair, it depends on the lineup you show up. Like Trey Hoffman Ren hasn't like hit yet. Yet we'll see if he does or not. But he's he's got some link to him. Caleb first is a bigger guy, so I actually like the different kind of looks and diversity that Painter can throw with those lineups.